Hi guys, we are all taught the concepts of object oriented programming and after that we are supposed to write reliable, scalable and highly maintainable code. But is it really that easy to always apply the concepts of OOPS and come up with the right solution which is scalable, reliable and highly maintainable? The good news is that software engineers have noticed there are some common problems that we all get stuck with. How do we create the classes? How do we instantiate them? How do we structure them together? How do the classes interact? These are some common problems that all of us get stuck with. And over the years, there are some templates that have been proven and tested for us. So the good news for us is that we just have to know these templates and this is what we use in our day-to-day -day daily life in office as well as for the interviews. Let me go into details of that, but before getting into details, Geeks for Geeks is providing an amazing opportunity and has come up with a hiring challenge for all the candidates who are looking to get fresher or intern job opportunities. In total, four companies will participate to fulfill their hiring requirements. This will happen every month and this month it is happening on 21st November 8 to 10 pm. The contest will have two DSA problems. And MCQ questions on programming logic, logical reasoning and quantitative aptitude. You can register using the link in the description and after registering you have to go through the job descriptions given and register for one or more companies that you are interested in. Your profile will only be considered for a company if you have registered for it so do check it out. This might be the opportunity that you are looking for. So as I was saying there are some templates to make our lives easier. These are called design patterns. These are reusable solutions for the problems that we encounter in our day-to-day -day programming. And mind you, these design patterns are not language dependent. So these design patterns can be applied in any language that supports object orientation. These design patterns are proven, tested and widely used. Let me tell you with my own experience, it has happened that my colleague has said to me many times that okay, let's use this design pattern, maybe factory design pattern. And I've actually applied them in my daily work. And not just in daily work, but also in interviews, like in low-level design. I have faced an interview where the interviewer told me that, you know what, you have to create the class in such way. And I told them, yes, I can create it using this design pattern. So these patterns are very important, not just for our daily work, but also for low-level design. But also, let me tell you that there are many, many design patterns. We are not expected to know all of them. Both in interviews and in our daily life, we are expected to know only few of them. Now to get into those, first let me tell you that there are three types of design patterns and to understand these three types, let's see what are the types of problems that we usually face while writing the code. Coming to the first thing that we do while designing any system, we need to create a few classes and objects. So we need to create classes and instantiate them, right? How do we do that? There are some design patterns specifically to solve these problems. There are factory, abstract factory, singleton. These are all creational design patterns and these are very commonly used. We are going to cover them in the coming videos. After creating the classes and objects, what do you do? You have to organize these different classes to form like a single structure and support a functionality, right? That's what happens in real projects. So now organizing these to form a structure comes under structural design patterns. Now there are design patterns for just for this. There's bridge, adapter, composite and so on. And after creating the classes, after putting them in a structure, what do we have to do? We have to see the interaction between the classes, right? How will they communicate with each other? So this comes under the behavior of classes. So behavioral design patterns. The examples are interpreter, strategy, observer and so on. I've given you a few examples of all the types of design patterns. What we are going to do now is create a series covering all of these widely used design patterns. We'll see why do we need the design pattern, what problem is it solving and we'll also see the code. So stay tuned, we have a lot coming up and feel free to ask any questions you have related to design patterns in the comments. I'll take them up in the coming videos. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you.